Hello and good day to you. Today's video on the versatility of a digital image in various crafts, the video edition. We are demonstrating the technique of vector art, which will be used in board games, fabric designing, confectionery, sugar craft, sewing, card making, hand knitting, cross stitch, crocheting, machine knitting, home decor, favor making, digital craft, millinery, sewing, quilting, and many more. For this project, we need a graphic software. I'm using Affinity Designer. If you have Inkscape, which is an open, if you have Inkscape, which is an open source software, you can use that. Alternatively, you can use any graphic software that has the potential to alter a geometric shape and also have the pen too. Alternatively, you can use any graphic software that has the potential to alter a geometric shape and has known or has a pen too. We also need color palette. So if you have pictures that you want to derive color palette from, we'll need that. After designing this image, we'll alter, we'll change the colors and then save it for future use, which when we are doing the fabric designing section of this book, we'll make reference to the image and use it for fabric design or any other craft we desire to implement it on. You can use your mouse or graphics tablet if you have one. I'll be using the mouse. So let's start. Open the graphics software. As I said earlier, I'm using Affinity Designer and I'm working on the designer personal section of the software. To get our image, we click on File, Open. A window appears and we'll locate our image from there. I'll use this line art for the demonstration. So just click on the line art image and here we have it on the work surface. It's locked on the background. You can release it if you want to, but we're just going to walk over it and then we'll save it with another name. Select the pen to and on the color palette, I already have a swatch here. I'm just going to use black first. For the line, click on the line. For the line art, the stroke, we're going to use a width of 0 0.8. Then for the fill, we'll have no fill. Using the pen tool, I'll just go closer into the image so that you see it. We'll start with the leaf because the leaf is at the bottom. You can start anywhere you desire. So select the pen to fill. It's locked and we are working with the stroke. So I'm going to start here. Just click 
as if you are tracing just click and it forms as it goes Some part of the leaf is not showing because the petals are over it or overlapping it. So we can just click randomly and then enclose it. Make sure it's enclosed. Try and fill it with a solid color and see if it goes. So I just try to fill it with a solid color. And here we have it. So we have the line art over it. Select it, click on the node to drag it, just drag the mouse or the cursor around the leaf so that the all nodes are selected. Then on the menu bar, where you have convert going to convert the nodes to convert to smooth just click on it and we have a smooth node it's going to make it curvy instead of the pointing node we had when we use the pen tool we'll take the pen tool again and this time we don't need to enclose we just need to draw the veins the mid rib when we finish one we stop because we want each and every one to, of this mid rib to be the veins and, or me and mid rib to be on a new layer Select the node, drag it, drag the cursor across or around the line and then convert to smooth. Now we have a curvy one. And if you want to change, if you want to move it, you can just move the node, select the node and then move it the way you want to and you can add new nodes if you desire we're going to do same for once we, we'll do for each leaf and then if you take a look you can see the ragged it's not smooth this compared to this the mid rib this um vein here is not smooth that's why we want we select we do select and you can see the shape of the node is square that's why we select and turn it to a circle a curvy node and you can move your node the way you desire so i'm just going to leave it i want it to close here When working with the pen tool, you have to deactivate it so that you can use it on a different layer. If not, it will act as if it's continuous and you don't want that. Then we convert. Let me show you this. We'll just um, see now it's acting as if it's continuous you can see the one we made now it's acting as if it's continuous we don't want that we want each one to be on a new layer in case we, there's something we want to alter which we want to be free to alter it without having so i'll just i'll just um, do some undo so that we do the extended curve so 
that's what we are uh, we are avoiding. Just going to alter this one quickly. And then deactivate the pen tool. Select the notes to drag it around it so that all notes are selected and then convert. So we have that. And you can elong elongate and you can elongate a node if you want it to be longer. So here we have it. I'm just going to close so that you see the petal, you see the leaf that we have done. We'll do the second flower but before we do it i'm going to select just the leaf drag the cursor across around all nodes and the shape and then click on group i just don't want to lose it that's what why i'm doing it and you can remove any one you don't want or make it invisible so let's make this, let's do the second one. You can use a pen too, you can use shape. I'll use shape for, for one. Okay, let's use shape for this one. Although it's going to be a bit slow. So to use shape, I'll select the ellipse shape too. I'll drag it across or around the leaf the fill is invisible and the line or the stroke is black the width of the stroke is 0 0.8 on the menu bar click on convert to curves because we want to alter this ellipse shape so I've just clicked on it. In case you miss it, I'll do it again. So after, let me close this one so that I don't come in distractors. So here we have the ellipse shape. In case you have it in flood view, you can you just have to close the view. Why we closing the view is because we want to see exactly where we are tracing on. So select the ellipse, 
ellipse shape or circle select the ellipse shape click on convert to curve select the node tool and you can see that the that we have nodes the nodes are now appearing and when you move it it you can form any shape you want that's what you want the that's what you want so with the node tool you start dragging and arranging it over And you can you can click to add node and if you want to delete a node just click on let me put one here okay like if i want to delete this node here activate the node and press the delete key and the nodes goes and it delete, disappears so because it's overlapping I'll just put it like so. Just need to arrange it properly. And we have that so if you want to use more shapes you can we've done the base leaf for the vein you just drag the ellipse shape click on convert to curves select the node to and then you drag to arrange you notice that is you have to make it very thin It's going to be in double line so when you are designing because you are using shape if we want to you we don't want it as double line so what we do then is to close the line art the stroke of the image and then activate the fill so we use the fill when we use geometric shape especially when we want a thin line like a thin line like the veins and the midrib so you see i've altered it now but for the outer one you can leave the fill and the flood together so i'm going to bring this one up i'm going to put it okay So I'm just going to close it and that's how you use shapes. But to make our work fast, I'm just going to continue using the pen tool. Okay, I said I'll, I promise to use shapes to alter shape for this one. Let me just complete it. So we select the okay i'm going to come back to
So take another ellipse shape, convert, click on convert, and then we, t we just place it on one of the place we want it to be. We want to do the tracing. Then moving the nodes and adding nodes. I wanted to zoom in so that we see it clearly. So we have that. We we'll take another one. Click on no, sorry, not convert to do not. <laughs> convert to curves. Then we'll place it where we want it to be. Okay, I think I need another node here to make this one curvy. So we have another Convert to curves. To make it quicker, you can also duplicate instead of just creating new ones. Duplicate, click on flip horizontal. And it flips, you take it with the move to, and you can arrange it, then resize it to how you want it to be. So I'm just going to rotate it a little and then flip it again. Then we denote to. Okay, we have. I'm just trying to reduce it a little. The gap is too wide. So we have another one here. You can duplicate and do the same. Right click on the layer palette to duplicate. And you can click on duplicate. When you move to select it and move it to where you want it to be. Move to selected. It activates the flip, the flip vertical and the rotate button. So you can just rotate. And with the nodes two, you arrange
Okay, this is the last one and uh, we need a small one for this. So I'll activate it. Layer palette, right click, duplicate. So let it move to so that we can flip. We can activate the flip icon. And then So here we have it. Compared to the, I'm just going to drag my mouse or cursor. Sorry, I'm going to drag the cursor around it and click on group. Compared to the pen, the pen is smoother because you we just did and rearrange the line here and there. So I'm going to put this and for the remaining part, we'll be using pen because we need to be fast. I did that for those that um, don't have the pen too they, and the desire to use geometric shapes, to alter geometric shapes to make the image. So we'll take from the, we'll start with the bottom petal. With a pencil, just select and keep on tracing. You have to trace each petal separately so that you can make any alteration. And don't forget to enclose the petal. So finish tracing that. As usual with the node tool, we drag across and change it to curve. You can see how fast it is and any note you feel is not in the right position you can move it and if you want to add extra nodes just click into it and you add another node So selecting the pen tool and deactivating, I'll have to bring down to the top. No, not this one. <laughs> you go back. Click on it and bring it to the top. Make it invisible so that you can work on the next one without it interrupting. So I've deactivated the pen tool. I'm going to select the pen tool again. That I can, I can work on a new layer. I have to bring it back onto and on to move handles. Select it. I just want to move one node and add another one. OK. 
we've done that and you can see how fast this is it all depends on the image sometimes it's easier to create with shapes sometimes it's easier because we're just doing some trace tracing take that away Take that. Oh, I need to remember the one I just did. Okay. Make it invisible and let's take this one now. This one don't re need more node movement, so, but just a little, and we'll make it invisible again. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we're on the fifth one now. And if you take a look, you know that twisting the handles can give you a ruffle-like effect. Something like a curve. I'm just going to okay we have that and this is the final one for the bottom petals I'm just going to do that So we finished that but before we progress okay let's just finish all the line art just going to I'm going to activate them all just the petals and here we can see all petals 
So I'm going to close this. You see them overlapping. So I'll just group them together. We don't want that because we don't want to lose them. We have another petal to work on. And they'll make it invisible. Same using the same method, pen tool, or you can use um Using the same method and the pen tool, or you can use shapes, geometric shapes, convert it to curves. Let me check if it really okay. That's fine. So selecting the node, activate it, drag the node, drag the cursor across the nodes, and then convert to smooth. Start changing the node, drag the handles to form S curve, especially where you have the especially where you have the ruffling of the petals the handle helps a lot the handle of the nodes so we've done that first one we go in a clockwise fashion so as not to miss. Oh, I did an anti-clockwise. Okay, clockwise of the petal. The clockwise in selecting the knots or in tracing. right we've done that so we have this Here we have that one and I'm going to just make it invisible.
Okay, so let me check and see. <laughs> yeah, I finished. I wanted to do another one. I just decided to check to see how far we've gone. So we finished that. I'm just going to group it together and close. So we have the petal now. So for this petal, what we're going to do next, we'll need a shape for it. Instead of uh, using the pen tool, we'll be using shape. So I'll just take the... Alternatively, you don't even need that. Let me ungroup. Select one of the petal. You duplicate. Take the node to... And then just drag in to make kind of uh, same shape. So we just want to make something like a uh, so let me do it again. I'll do it on another petal. And you can resize it. So I'm just going to select the move tool and just resize. Don't need to be proportional, but if you want it to be proportional, you can use um you can press the control shift or control key on your keyboard, control pad on your keyboard, and then drag. So you can you can make the shape. The way you desire, we just want to make kind of vectorize effect or vector effect. And it don't need to be too big. You can make it as... Um, so we'll reduce this a little and you can put it anywhere you desire it to be if you want it elongated you can do that if you want it short smaller you can do that and you can rotate it to fit whatever angle you desire it to be so we have that what i'm going to do to make it fast i'm just going to duplicate this I'll bring it to top and duplicate rotate it and place for the other flower do same place for this one the same just arrange it where you want it to be we still need to arrange it again Duplicate. It's coming out. It's getting bigger. So we just need to resize it. Okay. So we have it and you can alter it the way you want to. So I'm just going to do one extra one. Right click on the layer palette and click on duplicate. I'm going to make that one invisible so that when we select this, I'm just going to select only the I'm going to select only these um, fingers, or should I say palm design press the shift key on your keyboard and click on only the pattern design we just want to group them together so that when we're coloring we color them together then we take the petal press the shift key on the keyboard on un for only the petals and select all petals together when you finish selecting press um, group them together click on group So here we have the pet. If I decide to flood fill, you see how it's going to be. Then I cannot take this 
we take the inner image and this kind of effect we want as if there's um, a different coloration in the petal so that's what we want i'm just going to put that on make it in make it invisible then we'll bring the bottom layer petal we activate our palm uh, effect the petal effect i'll call it the petal effect it has a better name we duplicate it and repeat same for the on for the bottom petals or for the bottom flower and bottom petals So I'm just going to press shift and select this, just the effect. Then I was, we've already selected the flower together. So that's it. So here we have our flower and the petals, although it looks, um, You can see all the line art effects, but we have some other things to do. We're not going to duplicate the leaves now because we have some effect to put on the leaves. And once we put that effect, we can duplicate for the other side. So let's fill our flower first. I'm going to work with the upper petals before we do the stamens. So I'm going to take everything out and work with this. If you have colors you need, just click on the swatch in the layer palette or the color palette. You have your swatches. You can click on the swatches and use any color you have there. But if you don't have or you have an image, I'm just going to bring an image here. This is the image we use for our color palette. So to derive your color palette from it, just click on these um four bars that's at the end of the that's on the color palette layer or oh, sorry on the color layer with the brush strokes and the swatches click on the icon there those four bars there menu appears and click on create palette from documents and if you notice another menu appears don't click on as document palette because if you click on that and you close this file it's not going to save we, you have to click on as application palette so clicking on application palette is going to create it and here it has i have one before so this has made this number two this is the first one so it has created this for us and it has made it number two so what we need to do is that and if you see because it's application it has the logo of it so i'm going to create it as um, a document palette so that you see the what i'm talking about you won't really notice it until we close then you'll find out that it didn't save so we'll go click on create and then we just take as document palette and we have it here you can see the same number but here you can see that it don't have this um I think it is symbol here, just like it's like a document, like a page folded. Once we close, it's not going to save. It's not an application. So where is it here? Okay, here we have it. So I'm going to bring the application of it back. So this is the color palette that we'll be using for our image. So go back to our image and we decide which is going to be which this overlay. For the middle or the center of the flower, I'm going to use browns, different um, shade of browns. So for this overlay, let me use this pink. Oh no. Okay, let me use this dusty one. Okay. 
then for the outline i'm going to activate the outline and click it to white okay So yes, our flower. That is it. I'm going to bring the flower to top and then take it one step back. The fill color we we'll use for the flower is this. And we are sorry, we activate it to see. And we can decide which color we want. We want it a little bit different, so I think I like this. And for the stroke, we are going to make the stroke white. It has a nice effect if it's white. And if you decide not to, you don't want the white stroke on this um, effect, this petal effect, you can, and you have it like that. So it all depends on what you want. You can activate the stroke, you can decide to remove the stroke. So I'm just going to put the stroke as white. Then I will activate the next one. But before I activate the next one, I'm going to rotate this effect. I just want, okay, this one is rotated. So let's leave this one as it is. And activate the, its petal, its coordinating petal. So for this effect overlay, petal effect overlay, I'm thinking of a color to use and uh, oh no 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 and what will we use for the flood for the petal okay I think I'll use And then for the effect of a lay, no, it's too close. Okay. Oh, let me see. And uh, let's use that. And we change the line art to white let's see if we like it if we don't like it we can change the colors the way we want to. so here we are we are already building our petal and you can see how beautiful it is you can decide to change it to you can have one dif a different color up like if if i want to i can have a um, lilac up oh, no i don't want it as <laughs> I'm already went to activate this okay so can have the lilac up and have the pale one you can have it like so there's no law saying that you can make different um, shade of petals except the co customer desire that that it has to be a single color so let's go to the leaf i've activated it it's making i've made it visible so selecting the leaf I'm going to flood fill one part with a darker green and I'll take on to the line art I will make it white because it's grouped so I will need to ungroup and then I'll send this to back and bring it a bit forward that's because we have our background design here and I don't want it to hide Select each of these um, and press the shift key. Select the, select the veins. Bring to top. Bring forward. Close the fill of the veins. Can bring them up. We have one vein missing. <laughs> so we're going to close it. And here we have the veins. We still need to put some effect, which we use shapes to create. So here we have the other petal. I'm going to make this one just a bit light green. 
and I'm going to ungroup it send this one to the back and bring it forward a little then instead we'll make this the since this is going to be the fill because we use shapes we have to select it and close the stroke of it so that it just acts as white line then the base petal we have to change it to white outline looking at the petal uh, the sorry the base leaf the base looking at the base leaf you will see that we just have one color solid color some we, we need some effects i know it's vectors but sometimes we have to create some effect you're going to use it for fabric design and i want it to pop because of that i reactivate this first one can duplicate it and i'll take another shade of um green for it let me look for something that's going to be so close to it no i don't want it to be and i floor filled it then taking the node two, I'm going to drag it until it can give me some nice effects on the leaves. And delete any node I don't want. There. So that we have about um, two shades on one leaf. That's not all. We need to create some other effects on the leaves. This is just a plain and we'll close the line out. Anything you don't want, you can close it. You can remove the visibility of that. So we have to leave. I'm just going to zoom out a little so that we see it. But I want to create some effects. So getting taking the ellipse shape too, I'm going to just put it on the side here because I want to work on the side. Then click on convert to curves. Select a node tool. I will go in and make some nice design. Just some some leafy. Not really leafy design, just some curves, some shapes. So just put it like so. That means on top. So I'll duplicate and use um, a darker shade. Okay, just put it like so and get another. Select a ellipse to or ellipse shape and i'll just put on top and we'll take a darker shade of green you can convert it to curves and if you don't if you design not too tight that's fine so i'm just going to reduce it a little the size a little just to put and i'm going to duplicate that it's faster and i'm going to put something after drag the cursor of eye to group and then you can place it on anywhere on the leaf you want it to be we're just going to create some teeny weeny effects on the leaves you can even resize it you see it is just there so you can duplicate change the size you can make it uh plumber you can make it longer change it the way you want to change just going to place this one here and then we go in and we alter the way we want it to be you see it's uh, the same color so it's only showing one part so we can come in here and change that color Alternatively, this um, we don't need to put so I'm just going to duplicate this one, right click on it. Oh, 
let's not duplicate here <laughs> so go to edit oh uh, no it's a copy because mm, it's on group so i'm going to come into the group and duplicate it there i'll change the color to a darker shade green and i'll reduce it and i'll duplicate it again it's going to reduce and i'll make it a bit smaller so that it gives me a kind of nice reflection So we see we have a little, if you take a look, it has, a, we'll have one kind of small, nice effect here on the leaves. So that's what we're going to create over the leaves and we're going to have, if you want to come with a pen tool to just take, make a portion of the leaf, let's do that. So I'm going to take a part, one side of the leaf and I'm going to just come in here. And I'll fill it with another different color. You can do that. So I've created a different color there. And where is where did we create it? Where is that leaf? Okay. We duplicate it. With the move to we select to this other side, and we can leave it there. We don't need to overlay. Sorry, we don't need to um so we can change it to a different color. Then we need something here. This to be. So I'm going to do something there. I'll duplicate the same shape, but this time I'll reduce it a little. And uh, I'll make it um, darker. And I'll add to, to, I'll duplicate it. That's the same color. Okay. All right, so we have that leaves and um, let's take a look at our flower is coming. <laughs> you see, we've, we're transforming it. Okay, let's uh, work on this other leaf. And it's nice that they're different. Although we use shape here and we use pen tool here, we can see just the same effect. Not to take too much time, I'm just going to duplicate this one and take it over here find where we have that other one so i'm going to bring it forward continue bringing it forward using that icon on this on the other side so select this one and group it the first leaf to group it so that we don't um, make mistake by altering and uh, moving shapes that we are not supposed to move no that's not the one we want so okay we have this so we'll start creating our own. Going to put that there. I think this one should go with this brown here. We oh I think we let we took one from here. So I think um I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to activate so um, there's one of our yes that is it we have to bring it to the top and we have another one we have to bring down to the top that's what i was avoiding so i'm just going to take all the petals away first and uh, 
let me see okay let me group this one first then when i'm grouping this other side it will not affect okay so just drag the cursor over to group and then we can put this and on group okay you can see have the leaves showing and we can have the others showing they are not distracting anymore So I'm just going to make, take a circle, take the ellipse shape to press the shift key and you can make a perfect circle if you want to so make a circle. But if you don't want a circle, you want a teardrop, you have teardrop shape here and you can just put pick one there. So we just take a teardrop. Let's build it outside first. <laughs> now there is a beautiful outside. Let me see if it's the same color. Okay, I want it slightly darker. So duplicate and I'll pick the same color. Get to zoom in now. Then select the move tool and with the you can use a shift key, you can use the um control key, but I'm going to choose the shift key because I just want it to be just to move a little then I'll duplicate again and take a lighter shade gray shade and see the effect I will be able to create so I'm going to make the green I want the green to be not I don't want it to be too uh, too bright a green I want it to okay that's all right and um, that's not all I'll take the ellipse uh, shape too I'll just put it here and put a little dot of um, gray. I want to. I need a little gray. And I'm going to make it so small. We we'll need to use the zoom tool to see it. So gray. I'll duplicate you again. Take it to one side and add a white. So I'm just going to group it together press the control key on the keyboard and make it little okay i think that's my little white is too tiny so i'm going to select those two mm -hmm. and i'll just make it a bit no i need to activate the gray i think it's too Tiny. I can't even see it in the design. Okay, I think I will be able to see this one now. So I'm going to take it and just place it on the petal. It's going to act like a teardrop there. So if we make it a little bit bigger, it's going to be like a um, like a water drop on it, and we can decide to just um, duplicate it and put it on the other side or we can just put it on top of the midway we'll do on top of the petal that's fine we can do one on top of the petal so you can create any effect you want we'll keep on creating sorry to for the too much time but you know we are designing fabric and we want it to really come out nice and we don't want to we are although i'm trying to rush which is not right please pardon me for rushing we're still trying to make sure we create something beautiful so just creating some contrast on it just to give effect to the design and if we want to, we can also create the same color and then go to the line art or the stroke of the design and use them um, to create it so that it creates it so that it creates it like so. 
so you can have any effect you want and here we have i think we should stop there for the petals for the flower we have up so we have um what i'm going to do is to select the flowers together the sorry the leaves together and group sorry i've been interchanging please pardon me if i make mistake calling the names call a leave a petal please pardon me i will cl right click on the layer palette click on duplicate and then we're going to flip you flip vertical because we are taking it down and we're just going to rotate it and place it there if you want to just to save time if you want to you can go through the same process as we did to create this one so i'm just going to put them and um, move to create so here we have our but we are missing one so i'll bring this background to the top we are missing the stamens but before we create the stamen, I'm just going to make it invisible. Before creating the stamen, I just want to put a little water drop on the petal. So taking the teardrop, I'm just going to take it. Then we need a darker shade of pink. We don't need a stroke for it. So I'm just going to look for it's okay yeah this is a bit darker than this let me see let me put it over okay it's a bit darker just a little darker then you duplicate and we'll take the color the pink color which is this press the shift key on the keyboard so that and move from the drop part not the pointy part of the um the teardrop move from the drop part that is the curve part and pre make sure the shift key is pressed on the keyboard and then move drag the cursor towards just a little just to create a custom shadow just to create a kind of line art for the design this is what we want to create then select it again duplicate and we need a lighter shade this time you will need to go into the color palette so click on the color we're going to the color palette and just move a little bit and see what you can so we press the shift key and reduce it and see the effect is going to create yes that's a nice effect nice um monochrome of pink pink monochrome so when you have achieved the monochrome you desire that's all right so you Select the ellipse shape tool. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Press the shift key when you select the ellipse shape tool and just drag to create a circle. If you don't want a circle, you can use any other. You just want to put a reflection on it because it's vector. So we want to create a vector kind of reflection. So what we're we going to do, we need a gray first, a pinkish gray. So from the pink, you can get your own pinkish gray. So we'll just put this. Or one side okay we can put that there's always a gray so i'm just going to close that you will duplicate it and fill the other one with and duplicate it and fill the second circle with white the duplicated one with white and we'll press the shift key to reduce it not too small but so that it's just there so i'm going to group and put both of them together I'm pressing the shift key. I'm going to resize them. Sorry, I need to zoom in. I've turned it into an ellipse shape. Okay, so I'm going to resize them. That's nice. And I'm going to put them up. I'll make sure it's white and make sure this is a little bit gray. Let me take a lighter gray. Okay. group them together and when we place it it's going to act if you don't act it then we reduce it it's going to act like a teardrop there if we look at it 
so i know the, the different shade of pink so we need to change this pink this pink is too it's not of the same it's not of the same uh, kind of pink it's like a coral instead so we're going to change it to this pink and then we go into the color and move it to good we've changed it so we we'll have the effect you need them in the same shade you need them in um sorry monochrome the same color um family let me use that term so it's going to you know, saw the first one didn't um it in the one we did just now before we changed it didn't show properly because the pink is from it's a coral pink it's not from the same uh, line of pink here the same um gradient of pink or should i say yeah it's not of the same gray so now we have that we can leave that if you want to we can do that for i'll just duplicate and if we want a little drop we can i'll just put something here for the purple and make this one smaller so we can let me make it a bit bigger this one okay i think that's all right then for the purple i'm just going to click it let's see just going to start changing the colors let's see it's the same color no so the best thing is use the same color for make it selected and use the same color for this i'm just going to and now um, we're going to use this lilac and that's all then that's the first color that's the second one okay then we go into the color palette and we just move down straight line down and we have a nice shadow for it a nice a, a darker shade of the purple which will give us the reflection of as if it's a shadow so you can see it now looking at it you can see it's as if it's a it's a teardrop um sorry there's a raindrop on it a water drop you can make it circular you can make it uh, whatever shape you desire we can make anything we want to so here we have our design but we have we are missing something which i said i've forgotten about it and i just remember just now i'm going to bring it to the top is the stamens and for the stamens we're going to use circle the ellipse shape to or ellipse shape so press the shift key on your keyboard and just drag can create it of any size so i'm just going to use this as a nine size and i'll flood fill it with brown we'll duplicate and go for a mid brown so i don't like using i don't want to add the color of my swatch so i'll just go directly into color to do that and we'll move light we'll move up because we need it to be lighter press the control key and we can resize it to whatever you can press the shift key you can press the control key you can move it whatever you so the shift key if you want it to one angle the shift key is nice for that then duplicate again and we are going to go for a lighter shade pressing the shift key i'm going to take it to one corner that is it and we duplicate again this time and then we fill it with white we just have a small one that's nice <laughs> and um, we're going to group it together then we resize let me see let's duplicate it so we duplicate the stamens you're creating the stamens brown we want to duplicate and see if we like it before we start um, duplicating because when you've duplicated much it's difficult sometimes to change the color so when you can rotate so we have our stamp i think i like this one that's nice i open one that we did previously that i did for a fabric design for artistic um spoon flower 500 artistic voice 
the vector art that I did like this. So just keep on duplicating and arranging it over this. And you can rotate it. You can decide where you want the reflection to be. And remember, you can overlap. There's no law saying you can't overlap. You can overlap. It's not growing bigger. For this one, you will need to do your designs. You will need to do it singly. You don't need to group and resize to, to the no. You have to du duplicate each of the stomach. The, you have to duplicate the stomach and layer it on each other over or on each other. I think I want this reflective part to be out. So we have our stamen. I'm just going to close it. And when you take it back, you can see how it is. If you want to make it darker, you can do that. So, okay. Just going to remove, uh, to send this to the back, make it invisible, and then send it to the back. So here we have, let me group the stamens. Don't want them to move. So here we have our flower. It's really beautiful. And as you know, we can change the colors the way we want it to be. So I'm just going to open one that I did previously for... Okay, this is another one. This is one I did. Just use a certain color palette to make all of them the same. And the swatch for the color palette I used is um this... Is it dusty rose brown? This is the color palette I used for this one. Although I didn't put water drop, I did some um, just some this is circular effect on it. And there's another one here that I did. This was the one I used for the spoon flower fabric design to create the effect. You can see to uh, this is one I used for the spoon flower 500 um, artistic voice. I combined them, I was using this image to create different effect, crochet effect, 
knitting effect, um, digital painting effect, even metallic effects to make it like liquid metal so that we can use it for packaging and stuff. Yeah. So I use that also. So here's our image, the one we did now. So you can, if you want to put, if you decide that, okay, I want, um, I don't like the way the stamens are. I'm going to select all the stamens and then put, um, let me say, then you can put um, stroke. You can decide that you want the stroke to be white. If you want it to be white, you can put the stroke. It's all right. There's no law against that. So if you want to put a little of the, if you want the stroke to be brown, let me see if I can make it a bit darker. Then you can have that. So it's optional what you want. I'm just going to remove the stroke because I don't want stroke in it. And here we have our image. So we've moved our, we've taken this image. Let me bring it to the front. We've taken the design from this, from this line art design, we have created this. And we can make it, taking orders like so, we can overlay them. And I, I think, I don't know if I have the one I have here. I don't think I... So we can overlay them, like if I want to, I can just group this. Let me say edit copy and I'll come to, this is how also say edit paste. Okay, you can see that's small. We can use it to create, if we want to create a, this, we can create different flora effect with it. And I can take this one, say group, let me group it and say edit copy. And I'll come to this uh, image and say edit paste. Although you can, we can have it like so. So I'm just going to do something so that we see document setup, anchor to page. I'm going to, I'm just going to increase the canvas a little. So I'm going to make it um, like 10 and I'm going to say anchor to page. So we have, if we have our designs like so, if we have it, we can create, we can create um, a seamless design for a fabric. We can create seamless designs for fabric. We can use it for wallpapers. So we can use it for gift wrap. We can use it for games. We're using it for a board game. So we have different, we can use it for, we can use it for sugar craft for any cut any uh, craft you desire to you want to implement it into so you see we have it i'm just going to do i need to close it no let me just uh, go down back instead that was able so we need to save our work i have just i know i've divided but i just need to give you the inspiration so i'm going to go back Onto paste, onto transform. Okay, so we are back to our work. So what we need to do now is to save our work. We'll save in Affinity Format and we'll leave it like that. But if you want to, you if you want to export it, which we need to come in here for that, we need because we need to decide where we're going to do, create our repeats for the fabric design because we wanted it to make it a fabric um so for that if you want to but first let's save our work you click on file click on save us and we have it here i'm going to say i'll just take this and say the technique of vector I won't say vectorize because um, it's not of painted and we are trying to, no, we are creating vector out of it. So I just say technical vector out and I'll click on save. 
so we have it in affinity format can open it in every in all the affinity software like um where if you have the photo you have the publisher you can edit it in, in those softwares there or you can even implement it in the design or the, you can even put it on the cover of a book so for the export if you want to export you can export as svg it will still be in file format like this and you can open it in inkscape and make any alteration you can say if you save it, you export in JPEG. If you export in JPEG, it's going to give you a solid white background. If you export in PNG, it's going to remove the background. And if you export in PSD, it's going to be in file format, but you won't be able to alter this shape anymore as a vector because it will all be rasterized. But you will still have it in layer format. But uh, you have the it in layer format, but you'll not be able to play with the nodes to change whatever you want to. You will now need to use the like the selection tool um, of um, the selection selection tool like magic wand to change the colors, to click into it, to float fill with colors, or to paint over with the colors. So if you are going to open it in another software, you can save as PSD. If you have um. A vector software that you want to open it in save as svg so now we are not going to export because we'll need to make create different colors when it's time for us to do fabric designing we'll use this image we'll create a, use some um, different palette we'll create the image we'll create different colors from the uh, colors of it and then we'll export it into another software where we do we'll just use it for uh, fabric design so until then i want to say thank you thank you for joining me for this video of vector art until next time happy designing happy crafting and bye for now